All right, so that is Hurricane Aaron. It is still a Category 2 hurricane. The maximum sustained winds are near 100 miles per hour right now. And although it didn't make a direct hit, it's still a factor. So let's talk about it. So Hurricane Aaron did not make any sort of a landfall on the East Coast, but it's having a big impact on the beaches. Now in the 9 o'clock hour this morning, I spoke with Fox's Caroline Elliott, who joined us live from North Carolina. Caroline Elliott, what well, looks pretty windy there in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Not sure if you can hear me. Are things getting any better? Mike, I can surprisingly hear you because I get not surprising though because it's about 50 mile per hour wind gusts right now. Very, very loud. And not only is this wind something that you can hear and something that you can see, but it's really something you can feel. Mike, not only can you feel the wind just ripping the jacket, ripping the hood all over, but also you can feel that sand coming up off the beach, blowing into your face. I mean, I, I really am just covered uh, head to toe in sand right now, but the locals tell me it's apparently good for the skin, allegedly. I, I, I don't know about that, but aside from the wind, that's part of the story. The other part of the story is the waves, okay? We're told that on any normal beach day, these waves would be about one foot high, but today we've seen waves as high as, uh, as 15 feet. And this pier behind us has been taking a beating all morning, Mike. Again, locals tell us this is very unusual for Kitty Hawk. We, of course, know that coastal regions are very used to, to hurricanes during this time of the year. But again, they said that even these 15 foot waves, pretty exceptional, especially considering that Hurricane Aaron had never even made landfall, just coming close enough to the coast to create some of these issues. Further down south, about an hour from us at Hatteras Island, we do know that the state ordered mandatory evacuations. We are told about a thousand people left Hatteras Island. Many of those people came here to Kitty Hawk to get to really escape some of those conditions, but they're finding some of that wind here as well, Mike. I'm glad uh, to not see anybody in the water behind you, but I assume people have been coming along and kind of getting some pictures or videos because, I mean, it is kind of really neat to behold. Yeah, Mike, what? we have seen some locals out here just coming to try to see things for themselves. You can see that family that just walked behind us, but it really is not many people out here this morning. Just a couple people that are curious about what conditions are like. I will tell you one thing that was very surprising that happened about 15 minutes ago is a man came out here to smoke a cigar. What? And it's pretty windy, so I was pretty impressed to see that cigar actually stayed lit. But again, some people coming out and about here, not too many people, as you mentioned, no one really in the water. Uh, because we are in a double red flag warning right now. It's just simply not safe because of the chance of any riptide. So again, most people, as you can see, really taking these warnings seriously. All Mike. right. Well, it's too bad that we missed Cigar Guy because he sounds like he would have been a really interesting person to <laughs> yeah. talk to. <laughs> All right, Caroline, stay safe down there. Watch out yeah, for that Yeah, not cigar sand. weather, but. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll save that for another day. All right, check this out. Came across this video, came down from Fox Weather. Talk about being seasick. Our brave men and women of the United States Coast Guard out here uh, spotted in an inlet. This was in New Jersey and Manasquan, New Jersey. So they're kind of riding out the waves there in this inlet. There's a guy there, of course, on, on a jetty fishing. But I'm telling you, every once in a while, a big swell comes along and they are just up and down and up and down. Um, I guess just waiting it out, um, you know, maybe they had to leave the, you know, the dock for safety reasons. I'm not sure about all that. But anyway, yeah, uh, let me tell you something. Iron constitution an iron stomach those folks have. <laughs> we appreciate your service. OK, so as Hurricane Aaron is lashing the East Coast with all those high waves that we just saw, some coastal communities are at risk for experiencing some flooding. For more on that and some of the science of the storm, here's Fox's Chris DeMeo. While Hurricane Aaron isn't expected to make landfall along the East Coast, strong waves fueled by the storm's outer bands keep slamming communities and closing beaches across portions of the Carolinas up to New York. 
Forecasters say Aaron could intensify into Thursday, and local officials have warned large waves could cut off road access across North Carolina's Outer Banks Island chain. Um, it's, I'm anxious. The possibilities for flooding has triggered some evacuation orders, but not everyone is heeding them. All my friends are still here, and it looks like it's going to be mandatory, I mean, mainly oceanside flooding, so I should be good. So I didn't see a big threat. In Virginia Beach, some surfers say conditions produced by approaching storms are prime. We're dreaming of hurricanes all year, so we're really excited to be in the fall. But researchers say there's a lot of science behind what makes hurricanes so powerful. Hurricanes form by extracting heat from the ocean and converting that into strong winds and rain, um, basically like an engine of a car. Um, in the same way that when wind blows by you, it can take heat off of your body through evaporation, the same thing happens over the ocean. And then they can concentrate that energy into the swirling winds that then um, uh, uh, expand and grow as they travel across the uh, ocean. And some experts say rising ocean temperatures may only fuel future hurricanes to become more dangerous. So the warmer the ocean, the more heat that it can extract and, uh, and convert uh, via that powerful engine into wind and rain. Chris DeMeo, Fox News. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you know how important we take animal stories here on Forecasting with Friends. So another concern as Hurricane Aaron creates all that rough surf on the East Coast are all of the sea turtle nests. The Sea Turtle Conservancy says that adult turtles are fine. They can endure the rough surf for fine. They just uh, dive deeper and head into calmer waters. But experts say that storms can flood their nests. Now, groups have been out this week in Volusia County, Florida. That's the Daytona Beach area searching for sea turtle nests and moving them to higher ground. They've already located over 200 of them. They're so cute. You're supposed to turn off your lights at night, by the way, uh, so that the little turtles don't get confused. But if those little things try to make it into the ocean during a hurricane, that could just be bad news. So I'm glad there's volunteers out there that are helping them.